thank you for coming to the show. It is gonna be dope as hell. How are you doing? This is, <laughs> this is how I talk. So get used to it. Hey, everybody, hi. Uh, don't actually talk like that. Uh, my name's Bill Metzger. I will, will be hosting this magical journey of a comedy show. Feel free to come up close to the stage to make room for people in the back so they can get close to the stage and it will trickle on down to the back and everyone will get a little closer to the stage. Thank you. Um, this is exciting. This is an exciting show. I'm glad to be a part of it. I, uh, thank you for clapping. I have uh, lived in Richmond for about a year and uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm really enjoying the comedy scene here. I just found out I live in a bad neighborhood. Just like last month, I found out. Whole year, had no, no idea. No one really ever told me. Oh, I heard gunshots in the middle of the night, but I didn't put it, I just woke up and I was like, oh, sounds like gunshots, nah. And then like went back to sleep. Yeah, it was gunshots. The way I found out was I was walking my dog and I happened to glance over at the Salvation Army that is uh, right on the corner. I live on Grayson first, and there's a Salvation Army over there, right? So when I moved in, I was like, oh, sweet, Salvation Army. I like to shop thriftily, so this is gonna be awesome. Month ago, I'm walking my dog, I look at the Salvation Army, I do a double take, I'm like, oh shit, that's the other kind of Salvation Army. That's the kind where the homeless people go after they get the money from the shirts I wanna wear. <laughs> And then I could just see the whole neighborhood, like Neo in the Matrix. I was just like, oh my God, those aren't busted women waiting for a bus. Those are transvestite hookers on the corner. <laughs> Shit, wow. It was wild. That's why I see so many homeless people, because they fucking live in my neighborhood. Homeless people, when they're done in the, during the day collecting money or whatever it is that they're doing, they go home to an area to sleep at night. That's my neighborhood. <laughs> I see them as I go to work in the morning and pass them every day to like go out to comedy shows and shit. And it's very strange coming into contact with that many homeless people because you, when you see one a day, you're like, oh man, you feel okay not giving them change, right? Because you're just like, oh, sorry, I use a debit card or like whatever your thing is, whatever your excuse is. <laughs> I, and earbuds and then listening and not hearing, whatever your thing is to ignore homeless people. It starts to get you when you see them over and over again. But the thing is, is they, they, act, they ask for weird shit. Like I had, a, I passed a guy recently and he stopped me and was like, hey man, hey, 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 you got a size nine and a half sneaker on you. Like what? <laughs> Obviously no. Oh shit, dude, I, I had nine and a half sneakers. I thought, uh. Normally, I use a debit card. Normally, I have size nine and a half sneakers on me. I think I stopped me once. <laughs> he, I had, uh, on that particular day, I was using the earbud technique, and so I was listening to music. That's not, I don't actually do it to avoid homeless people. I just like listening to music. I hear it's not good for you because in a neighborhood like I live, if you're listening to music and, and walking at night, it's easy for people to come up behind you without you knowing and like mug you, which that bothers me, but not the mugging, take my money kind of part, but the part where I have to be polite to the beggar or the, uh, the mugger, cause he, I don't know what he says. So I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me, what sir? <laughs> oh, you want my money? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I use a debit card. So I'm just gonna cancel it, please. <laughs> By the way, that I was <laughs> uh, when, when I was walking my dog. This is how ridiculous my mind is. When I was walking my dog that night, he uh, shit on a meat tree, like a tree median, where there's a tree and some fucking grass. He shit, and there happened to be a black plastic bag balled up, just like right next to where he took a shit. And my first reaction was, "Oh my god, it's coming out in bags now! Awesome! That is awesome!" I don't have to pick it up anymore. I literally, for about three and a half seconds, thought that 
my dog was eating plastic bags and pooping inside of them and then shitting them out. And I was like, oh, you're so smart, you're such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> it started to work, putting plastic bags in his food dish. You know, I was worried that he wouldn't eat the plastic bags, but turns out he's a smart cookie. I got to, uh, uh, I got to take a half day off of work today. Oh my God, a half day. I feel like I've made it in, in the comedy world because I'm opening up for Kyle Kinane and I took a half day to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I work at an office, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just giddy. It's like in my Friday right now. It's awesome. I work at an office with college kids, which is weird because uh, I know there are some college kids here. Let me tell you about yourself because this part of yourself, you don't know. <laughs> you don't. You'll, go to, you'll, you'll understand later when you join the workforce or whatever. Uh, so I work with college kids, and the thing about you guys is you're really smart, okay? But only about, like, one thing. Like, whatever class you just got out of, like, you know everything about 15th century France. You know what I mean? And I know people who will insert it into the conversation. I was in my office having a conversation once, and uh, this college kid walked in and overheard us, and he was like, oh, that's like how uh, Machiavelli reinvented the political system. I was like, no, it's not, dude. 7 is just giving away free Slurpees. That's it. <laughs> It's just free Slurpee day. This is nothing to do with poly. By the way, here's, a, here's something you can do at 7-Eleven. Um, and this comes from myself having been high and paranoid at 7-Eleven. And in line and just like feeling really anxious and weird. So if you are in line, you don't have to be high to do this. If you're in line at 7-Eleven, okay, just real casually to the guy behind you, just turn around and go, Everybody knows you're high. And then just turn right back around. And don't move. <laughs> and then just wait to see what happens behind you because there will be some kind of explosion or implosion. I don't know, smoking weed is fun, but I can't really do it. Um, I get paranoid and weird about it. Like if I'm high and I'm alone, it's awesome. And I'm like, yeah. I can't believe I don't listen to George Michael every day. You know what I mean? Like, I have, like, weird thoughts. <laughs> Shit. And if I'm, if I'm with people outside of my apartment, I'm more like, guys, I think the Illuminati owns this Applebee's. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Seriously. <laughs> uh, one time I hit a deer while I was high. Um... Yeah, he, I don't, don't, that's not fun. Don't ever do that. Um, if your friends are ever like, let's get super stoned and hit deers in our car, it's like, no. <laughs> so, so I hit a deer once. The thing, actually, he hit me, okay? And he ran out and hit the front side of my car and he f flipped upside down in the air. But because I was high, I made eye contact with him for like 10 entire seconds. It was just slow motion of him just like, what is going on? <laughs> What's upside down? I've never been upside down. What is happening to me? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for you to be upside down in the air. I just wanted Doritos to taste better. <laughs> and it was, they tasted awesome. They were like explosion Doritos, so it was totally worth it, I think. I was high, so later on I was just like, maybe he just flew away. <laughs> no, the deer dies in the end of that joke. I just want, to, I want everyone to understand very clearly that's not a happy joke. The deer's dead. Uh, I used to, uh, I, like I said, I took a half day, which means I'm getting paid, or I was getting paid for a half the day. Uh, and I used to not get paid. The closest I ever got when I was waiting tables and shit, the closest I ever got to being paid while getting time off was when the restaurant would send me to a store because they ran out of shit. Oh my God, that was... <laughs> Like, getting paid time off now is awesome, but when you're young and poor, getting like 2 15 an hour to walk around a grocery store is like heaven. It's like going to Disneyland and fucking Mickey blowing you the whole time. I don't know. 
<laughs> almost, not quite. Almost a good impression of Mickey. Thank you for trying. <laughs> it was like, maybe if his mouth was full of cock, then that's dead on. It's a dead on Mickey impression with dicks in his mouth. <laughs> um, anyway, so once I was working at Olive Garden and uh, they sent me to the store to get some shit. So I'm walking around for a while. I know where the bacon is, but I'm like, where's the fucking bacon? Because I just want to be not at work. I finally get up to the line, and there's a woman in front of me. Her cart is full of shit. She's very downtrodden. Like, she's just, her daughter's running around, and she's grabbing stuff out of her cart, and she's just like, like, putting stuff on the conveyor belt, not paying attention to the world. And I'm just happily standing, because I don't want to go back to work. So I'm like, yes, fucking take your time, lady. Her, her daughter's running around, and her daughter grabs the uh, door to the impulse buy, like, refrigerator that's got waters and Cokes and stuff. Then she starts opening closing that door, just... And the mother gets fed up. She's like, Rebecca, if you open and close that door one more time, that man's gonna get you. And she pointed at me. <laughs> gonna happen at all. It was weird. <laughs> I should have fucked with her and been like, ah, I'm gonna get ya! Yeah. <laughs> As if I'm standing there thinking, if this girl opens and closes this door one more time, swear to God I'm gonna molest her right here in fucking Kroger. with this bacon. See, that's the thing is I, I didn't look normal because I had come from Olive Garden, so I had a tie, I was like dressed very nicely, and I had like 10 pounds of bacon and 40 lemons. Nothing weird going on here. Hi, Rebecca. Uh. I looked like the shittiest child of molester. That's like, maybe if I dress nice, though, really. The kids will trust me with my bacon and lemonade. It was weird. I had, another, I had a weird experience at the restaurant once um, with a kid. Uh, the thing about waiting tables is that you are not allowed to laugh at your patrons. <laughs> That's like the number one rule is that if something fucked up happens at the table, like you're not allowed to laugh in their face. And I was really good at that usually, except for this one time, everything just went horribly wrong. And I'm gonna tell you about it. Let me set the scene for you. So I'm, I'm in the back corner of Olive Garden. That's not important except for it was in a booth, okay? So there's these two ladies, friends, one's a mom, and the mom has her kid, all right? So the two ladies order lunch, and the mom turns to her kid. She's like, Timmy, what do you wanna eat today? They've got spaghetti, they've got pizza, and they have chicken fingers. And as soon as the kid heard that the Olive Garden carries chicken fingers, he jumped up in the booth and he went, yay, chicken fingers! And then he punched his mom in the face. <laughs> Just in her mouth because the Olive Garden carries chicken fingers. <laughs> That's what set this kid off. And he thought about it too. He cocked back and he was like, should I punch her? Yes! Yes, I need to punch this bitch for the sake of chicken fingers everywhere! Huh, huh. It was weird, man. She was like, we don't hit mommy. Who is we? Who? Stop making chicken fingers. <laughs> if domestic violence results, <laughs> um, I saw a, uh, I saw a, uh, PSA recently, it was a PSA for, it was an old one on, like, YouTube, and it was for, uh, D.A.R.E. So, uh, the way they set it up was, this, there were two kids in their school, right, at the locker, and uh, one kid was like getting his books in and out of the thing, and another kid came up, jean jacket, spiked hair, obviously a drug dealer, right, who wears a jean jacket and gels their hair. <laughs> Total drug dealer. So he comes up, he's like, hey man, I got something you want to try. The kid's like, what is it? He's like, boom, 
drugs. Like, he called them drugs, first of all. <laughs> and then he held his hand out, and there were, like, four perfectly rolled joints. <laughs> as if he's going to go through the trouble, just be like, joints. <laughs> really good at rolling joints, bro. <laughs> Can't have them. No, he fucking... The, he, the kid... <laughs> and then, you know, of course he paused. Like, the screen paused. And it was like, what do you do? <laughs> Here's who was asking the question, though. The Ninja Turtles popped up. <laughs> right? And the Ninja Turtles... In, like, they, the Ninja Turtles should have just kicked the kid's ass with karate. But instead, they were just like, what do you do? It's like they just had a question and answer session. What do you do if someone offers you drugs? And Michelangelo pops up, he's like, you order a pizza! <laughs> and then Donatello, being the smart one, was like, no, you tell an adult. And I'm sitting on my couch like, no, you order a pizza! <laughs> yeah. I am now ordering a pizza and not going to the bank if someone hands me four joints. <laughs> Especially if they're like cool and they got a jean jacket and spiked hair. I saw another uh, video that was, uh, it, it was, tell me if you've seen this before or if you remember seeing it. It was a video of the show Dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah the Jim Henson shit on TGI Friday, right. So this video was a three minute clip of the last season, the last episode of the entire show, Dinosaurs. Do you know how that show ends? They go extinct. That's, it's like the network pulled the plug and they were like, fuck you, everyone's dead. You know what I mean? It's like the scene is so somber, the family's in their living room and um, the little baby dinosaur, the not the mama dinosaur, is like, Dad, are we gonna be okay? Dad's like, I don't know. And he looks at the camera, and the camera just like pans out, and it goes out the window, and there's just like snow piled up and falling, and there's sad piano music, and then it just fades to back, black, and it's just like Jim Henson. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I did not realize that that show ended so bleakly. That's like if the show Friends ended on 9-11. It's like, fuck, everyone's dead. <laughs> Everybody's dead, except for Chandler. He's like, could this be any more tragic? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let's uh, keep this show rolling.